Good morning, coffee with Pastor Sue this morning. Um, it's a wet, uh, dreary kind of Wednesday. We've had a week or so of great weather, hoping that everybody got outside to do something for fresh air the past few days. It has been amazing. And we are thankful that uh, we have that opportunity here on the West Coast. And uh, for those watching in Ontario and that, I am sorry. Uh, and yet I'm thoroughly enjoying the fact that we are in full spring mode here and do get to be outside and, and, and enjoy the fresh air. Um, with that, it's, it's also a benefit in that fresh air, no matter what, is going to be great for your, your attitude and your physical being and your, your frame of mind, your mental health. So even if it is cold and, and, and whatever, try to get some fresh air every day. That will certainly help um, with a lot of things going on right now because of COVID. Um, the neat feature this week is that there seems to be a kind of a pattern of uh, things happening in a regular manner so you know the adjustment seems to have have happened they say it takes uh, three weeks to establish uh, new habits uh, to do something consistently for three weeks and that becomes your new habit then and we're in week five of COVID social distancing and and paying attention to all those uh, good practices that help keep us all well and, and safe and be respectful of each other um, so most of us are probably in a really well-established uh, pattern of um, how to manage through. Uh, the neat feature is that um, we've got the day-to-day -day stuff. It's morning, it's time to feed, it's time to dress, it's time to you know get some things done. Um, gets a little blurry when it's to, oh, is it the weekend or is it the week? What day is it? That's where some things are probably starting to get a little blurry for some folks and um, I, I would say that uh, for those who who use devotionals to, to read and study, um, look for those that have a calendar date in them. And some of your calendar dates will have what day of the week it is on it. And, and uh, celebrate each and every day that, um, you know, today is Wednesday, April the 22nd, I believe. I'll check. Yep, April 22nd. I have it on my, my watch, so that's, I, I cheated. So um, with that in mind, um, Something is, is uh, something that I, even for myself, I triggered it last week of asking the question, if you and Jesus were to spend some time together, uh, what would that look like? How would, how would you feel? What would you say? What would you do? Um, what would be your uh, emphasis of, of, of whatever? Would you be afraid? Would you be thrilled? Would you be, you know, uh, are we buddies? What's going on here? And that would be a very normal process. And this week, um, just to continue part of that conversation a little bit, um, one of the, the, the points that came up in this week's study in our, our leadership uh, mentoring times with uh, Ralph and Chris and I, um, talking about how we do comparatives of how we see God. And in comparisons, um, some of us, you know, our, our view of God in the first place uh, you know, what, what, what did God look like? What was a feature about God and, and his character and his being um, that was prominent when you first came to know God as your father? Um, and what did that look like? And so the author spoke about um, God being a, a king and uh, God being a authoritative figure. Um, uh, for some of us, it might be um, uh, God is uh, can be punitive because he, um, he, 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 he is just and he has he has, uh, he wants to see justice but he also is a God of mercy and some of us get kind of in the pattern of well if, if, if God's God's looking for me to perform well and to behave well and to do the right thing and to keep doing more things before he'll give me his approval and um, the hard part is, and we do this to ourselves, is we try to picture God as a father based on our understanding in our human nature part of what a father is. Now, for some of us, um, we've had great fathers. 
there have been some absolutely fantastic fathers that have loved, that have served, that have cared for, that have uh, corrected, that have guided, that have mentored, that have been there with us on our journey. And then there are others for whom that is not necessarily the case to varying degrees. And, and so we, we kind of carry that image over into who God the Father is. Um, what the author is speaking here is, is not us understanding our image of God as a Father, but God the Father as our image of who a Father is to be. And, and there's a difference. There's a big difference. Because God the Father has reached out to us with grace and mercy. And in that, he has provided salvation. He has provided a way to uh, live and to be here in this form, in this place on earth. Um, and it's outlined in his word. And it's outlined in, in how we fellowship with each other. He speaks it to us through the word in the Bible. He speaks it to us in our times of prayer, in our times of worship, and in our times of fellowship. And there's parts of that that we're kind of feeling left out on right at the moment in terms of the fellowship and our corporate worship and all that. But we still have opportunity to do all that at home. We still have opportunity to do that in the online format that we're working with now. We still have opportunity to to hear uh, music through a, a cable station or the radio or your favorite CD, DVD, cassette, uh, eight track. I don't know if there's any of those still around. I'll check with Ralph. And, and we still have those opportunities to let the Spirit of God speak to our spirits and show us because we have access to all of that. And believe it or not, because life has changed enough, I would like to say most of us have a pattern of time available to us at some point in a day or within the week that we can take time to spend more time being in the presence of God and understanding his character as a father, but also in understanding his heart as a father to us. And his heart as a father to us is that he's loved us so much that he sent his son to pay for our sins. He made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins and to be forgiven to go on to live in the hope of being with him in heaven. And um, which of us wouldn't just drop everything if one of our kids needed something? If one of our kids said, ow, or I'm hurting, or I've got a problem, I would say 99.9% .9 of us will have dropped or found a way to drop everything to hang on to, to hold on to, to speak to, to be there for our child that is hurting. And in our sin, we were hurting. In our sin, we were lost. And God the Father presented us a way back presented a way for us to be healed, for us to be restored, for us to be renewed, for us to be revived and to be empowered by his Holy Spirit. And that was through the work that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We've just come through Easter and the work that was done on the cross was more than enough to guarantee us, to enable us, to allow us to understand the heart of God the Father. And to understand the role and, and, and the purpose of Jesus Christ, who is our joint heir, that we are brothers and sisters, even with Christ, we are joint heirs with him in all that God has for us. And so that in and of itself, that work is completed and done, and that is our sustenance. That is what we work from. That is what we live from. That is what we worship from. That is what we pray from. That is what we read his word from. That is what we fellowship from. The work of Christ that was done on the cross and his resurrection and then the empowering of the Holy Spirit afterwards. We function from there. It is enough. It is sustaining. There is more there than we would ever need and this is the time for us to sit back and say, I don't need fancy gizmos and gadgets and programs. But as I read about the per character traits that God would want for me, because as a loving father, he shows them to us. 
in his written word. He shows them to us in his, uh, when we spend time with him in prayer. And he speaks to us and says, you know, Sue, you probably could have handled that a little differently. Do you think you could have used some sweet words on that instead of a quick opinion? these types of things. Um, we have people we look up to as men and women of God who, who handle life's issues in such stellar and exemplary ways that um, there is a benefit for us to watch and to see and then to practice even the things that we see that look good, that handle that situation well, that showed the love and the grace of our Father by how that person carried through with that action. And, and that's important for us. In all of that, as we understand that we have everything we need because of who God the Father is and because of what Jesus Christ did, our identity is established. Our identity as a believer, our identity as a follower of Jesus, our identity as a daughter or son of God is firm. We don't need to question it. We don't need to try to figure out what that looks like anymore other than understanding all the principles God has for us in his word on how we can work through any and every situation we are in in life. And I promise you, even where there are areas where it seems kind of gray, God will speak to your spirit and allow you to come to terms with what he has for you, what he's asking of you, and he will enable you and equip you to do all that he has called us to do. And that is our identity. Our identity is to understand and to live as a son or daughter of God. We, we, we all functioned as a son or daughter of our parents. Uh, we all understood, you know, the role of, oh, my dad was the village uh, baker, so everybody thinks I'm going to be the baker. Well, if that was what you were to be, then you had someone to learn from. If you were someone else, then oh, maybe that's so-and-so. I know at this point, um, one of the, the characteristics that my uh, kids all say they got from me is their sense of humor. And um, their father confirms that kind of regularly. He's, he kind of blames it on me, actually. But, you know, um, all these little features of our identity are valuable. And they, um, they need to reflect God the Father. And they need to reflect the purposes of the work of Christ on the cross. And when we grow into that feature regularly, we then have the opportunity to speak about uh, achievement or service, uh, the servanthood. It's, it's, it's not just, oh, now I'm equipped for ministry. It's, it's the natural rollout of being a servant for others for the purposes of bringing Jesus Christ to their lives. Um, do we do that specifically? I wish to become your best friend who bakes a meal for you because you have to accept Jesus right now? No, but we show his love when we reach out to people who need it, when we are there for their moments, or when we are there just to bless them because. And we learn about people as we go along. This past few weeks, all the phone calls, all the, the times of taking, uh, co having conversations with everyone, there's been some neat things I've been learning about some of our folks that um, I'm, I'm just blessed with how he has, has uh, brought uh, people into our, our, our acquaintance and, and, and our honor to serve you at here at Highway. But I'm blessed that the greater kingdom of God has so many neat and amazing people uh, in in the kingdom and that they are just being exactly who God wants them to be, doing what God has called them to do and to be a part of the world that we're in right now. So while yes, we need to stay safe and we need to stay calm and we need to stay kind, um, we also need to keep serving Jesus. And uh, with that servant approach, um, I have a request as, as a servant. I have a request that you will pray for your pastors and your ministry leaders here at Highway and at your own churches, if, if your home church is another, another uh, church. Um, these are times where it's becoming, I would say, evident that um, we need to address 
what what our gatherings are going to look like after we get back together what our ministry approaches will be what types of uh, tools technology um, big one which i'm not the biggest most comfortable person with any of it but i'm, I'm working on it um what that's going to look like and, and and how that's going to help us uh keep engaging with our loved ones who need to know you who need to know christ who who need to come back to the fold um who we'd love to see come back to the fold uh our communities our neighborhoods our schools our jobs our our towns the businesses um the government uh all of these things this is a time for us to start thinking about what is it that God is wanting each and every one of us to be part of in how we speak Jesus to those around us, how we live for Jesus with those around us, how we demonstrate that the love of God the Father and the love of Jesus Christ his Son and the work of the Holy Spirit will give us opportunity to speak to those around us and that we will have a boldness because of the Holy Spirit to, to share who Jesus is, to share that we have opportunity and the hope of heaven and um, that we get to be a blessing uh, as we serve each other because of the love from God the Father and the love from Jesus Christ, our brother who allowed himself to be sacrificed and from the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And from there, then we, we get to participate in um, developing what our gatherings will look like after this, how we're gonna make them happen, um, what is the important feature of it, um, and, and what is a, uh, a tool or a medium that we're gonna get to use to express that uh, efficiently and well, and uh, what's the new thing we can learn this week? So perhaps the question is, uh, first of all, obviously praying for uh, the decisions for the future rollout of, of, of how church is going, what could look, could look, and please participate in that. And uh, participate in, in, in prayers with visions and in comments of a concern or how do we take care of this issue if we have to do it this way. We, we need to hear it all and we want to hear it all. Um, if you do have anything you have need of, please call. If you have um, things you can offer, please call. We'll make sure if we can match people up with, with those types of things. Um, and we'll go from there. Then uh, we'll go from looking at how we can do things in the future um, in order that we're just serving because we're just gonna love on the people around us the same way God loved on us and the same way he loved on us in how he sent his son and, and the Holy Spirit to us. So let's, let's pay attention to those things. Let's pay attention to um, maybe the personal part of it is, is if you were to spend time with Jesus, what would that look like? Let's, let's think about uh, if, if God were to be kind of living in your house for this next week um, and then you two had a sit down next week, what do you think you guys would be talking? What do you think would be on his heart for you after having spent a week in your home and in your life and in your world? And uh, um, what do you think you would, uh, I'll let you and God sort that out. What's that gonna look like? And uh, what's he gonna bring to the table for you? That uh, based on the knowledge, the absolute knowledge of the fact that God has a father heart of love for us, and if he has that for us, I would think that anything he would speak to us after spending a week in our world, he would have full knowledge and ability and resources and identity available for us to do all that he has planned for each and every one of us. So that's my, my challenge, my thought for you for this week. Take care, be blessed, be safe. Uh, as our, our BC uh, medical uh, chief doctor, uh, Dr. Bonnie says, uh, be kind, be calm, and be safe. I also say be blessed. Thank you, and take care. Bye now.